Brad McDonald is one of the best-known Capitola heroes of the past half century. A leader in the incorporation drive that created the city in 1949, Brad grew up in Capitola. By the age of 27, he was founder and a partner in Shadowbrook Restaurant on Wharf Road. He was also the top candidate in the initial race for city council. A year later, he was the mayor who guided Capitola through the first rough and unsteady years of city government. In 1954, Brad left the Shadowbrook to join his father in a new business at the end of the Capitola Esplanade. It was known as the Saba Restaurant and Caribbean Nightclub, situated on the site of the grand old Capitola Hotel. Once this new establishment was open, Brad's father, Jack McDonald, was inspired to tour the village with his movie camera. The result was a classic portrayal of village life in the mid-1950s. Brad, now retired and living in Utah, recently found this film and knew these glimpses of Capitola would provide a refreshing look at the past. He narrated this presentation and sent it to his hometown so the community could once again see the merry-go-round on the Esplanade, Capitola Avenue filled with vintage cars, and all the traffic woes of the village diminished by a bright pink elephant train. A surprise awaits on the Capitola Lagoon where there are scenes of the very first Capitola Begonia Festival of 1954. This is Brad McDonald's gift to the community on the occasion of Capitola's 50th year as a city and as a story told well in Brad's own words. That's me coming across the street from, that's a, there's a Sable parking lot across the street. That's a Mexican restaurant now. I'm reading in Life magazine, walking across the street to the Caribbean. I used to stop there and get pie. This is a famous bartender chick that was with me so many years uh, at the Saba in the Caribbean. And that's chick crossing the street. And of course the Capitola Theater was going wild then. There's the, the Caribbean ballroom. Uh, we danced to all the big bands at those times. Tommy Dorsey, uh, Ella Fitzgerald, Patio was next door. Think of all of the name bands played there for us. Had Glenn Miller, when Glenn Miller died, his brother took over the band. Glenn Miller played for us one summer. There at the Caribbean Ballroom. That's the Capitola Hardware. That's a variety store now on Capitola Avenue. And then just up where it says rugs, that used to be where it says pharmacy. That was a post office at one time. And Benaeus' restaurant, Benaeus right up the street there. The black and white grocery store, where it says seven up on the side. And then right next to it was uh, Vivian's place and the Greyhound stopped there. Uh, when the mail used to be bought to Capitola, it was picked up at Soquel by Jack Nichols in a horse and buggy. And, and just was only about one bag of mail. Uh, and he'd bring it to Capitola and, and distribute it to uh, Harry Hooper, who was the postmaster at that time. Little Barry ran the black and white grocery store. Uh, and then Carl Sneath's grocery store was across the street from that. We'd like to have some of those old cars, wouldn't we? Red and white grocery store, that's in the Knepa building. <clears throat> that building on the corner, the was found that building on the corner, when all of the downtown Capitola burned, uh, that Knepa corner was saved only because the Knepa family uh, took the fire hoses away from the firemen and, and protected their own place. A Venetian court. There's Venetian Court and the, right in front of Venetian Court. We had swings on the beach at that time. I know when I was the mayor, uh, we put the swings up for the first time on the beach. <coughs> and uh, in, in those days, the, uh, the lagoon was dammed up in, and the water was clear enough to swim in. We didn't have the problems that you have uh, today. There's the Sabre in the background. The Sabre was a beautiful place with slanting windows and uh, we had a rain machine, we could make it rain, 
there and rain on the roof and whatever. And uh, uh, this is a family on the beach. It happens to be my wife and two children. <laughs> the bridge there's the bathhouse the bathhouse of course you can see all the boats now they had boat rentals in front and they had a little swimming uh, area for the kids uh, fenced off for the little children to swim in and then of course the uh, Soquel Creek going up the creeks a beautiful view there they used to dive off of that trestle into the river it was deep enough under the trestle Yeah, that river could be very calm and peaceful, but in the, in the summertime, there's been times in the winter when it really it would act up when we'd have a storm. And there's Al Lent's house up on the cliff there. Molly Lent is still living there, I understand. And some of the old homes on the cliff above are still there today. They're painted different colors. <coughs> Venetian Court at one time, the seawall got all broken down. The front rows of Venetian Courts were all broken in from the waves of the ocean. My mother again, Mabel McDonald. My mother had just gotten back from New Jersey. They lived in New Jersey for a while, first left Capitola. My father would shoot these films. He shot a hundred rolls of film, and we had to go through them and find just what might be interesting for Capitola. And this happened to be one of them that had quite a bit of Capitola on it. Our home, or my mother's home, up on top of the hill there. That used to be in front of the Shadowbrook, and we jacked it up and moved it. Uh, there it is. There, that house used to be in front of Shadowbrook, and we jacked it up and moved it down the street on Wharf Road and put it up on that hill right there. And immediately after that, the whole bank kind of gave way underneath and we had to do a lot of showing up and spent a lot to uh, get the foundation worked out there. There she sits. There was a beautiful, beautiful, huge pine tree right under that house. My dad, Jack McDonald, went up the river in a rowboat to get some of these scenes. And There's the old shadow brook that with, the, with the umbrellas on the roof and the gonias hanging on the side uh, and a huge lawn in front that was all washed out in 1955. Uh, probably about 20 or 30 feet of the front of the shadow brook was washed away in, in the storm of 55. Antonelli's begonias usually hung across the front there. I think that's the Novak's hole across the, the stream from Shadowbrook. Look deep enough to swim there at that time. I haven't seen it that deep since. River looks pretty clean there. Nice, lots of boating and
Now we're back down to the beach. In the old days, a riverboat used to run up the river. It was powered by three sons of Andrew Bear. He would pump that boat up the river. And he would holler all aboard for the big boat, and everybody on the beach would holler up the river. And they went up to the shadow brick. At that time, it was a little tea house. And people would come up there. Now you see that? How, how deep the bridge was under the bridge? You could never do that today. Look at the boys diving off of there. There's probably at least uh, six or eight feet of water under there. Uh, there's a fancy little dive. But the boys could line up on that bridge and dive off into that river at that time. And my mother's sitting on the, on the beach again. Very little traffic. This is Capitola Avenue, coming up Capitola Avenue now. Uh, right past the city halls on the left, it's there today, we had old Packard. There's the Capitola City Hall, what it used to look like. A far, far cry from what it is today. Railroad Trestle too was much narrower. It was a lot narrower than it is today. It was widened about 20 feet, uh, but it was narrow. Only two cars could barely get under uh, the uh, railroad trestle in those days. Of course, Antonelli's begonias, they were so famous for the begonia festival and so good that Antonelli's uh, family were a great family. They uh, Eventually, we, we sent seven tons of begonias uh, to the World's Fair, to the Mormon Pavilion, and all furnished by Antonelli brothers, and we got all of the airfare donated free from Flying Tiger. And then the strawberry growers furnished the boxes, so it was quite a, it was quite a deal that we sent. Uh, seven tons of flowers over a two-year period. This is in front of Shadowbrook in the early days. The family, the road was just a, a little old dirt road. Uh, and this is the first elephant train, see that? This is the, uh, Mayor Daly was the mayor then, and this is the running of the, the first day of the elephant train that ran people from uh, the grocery store up there uh, on the way to Soquel on the left, uh, and that's there's a big parking lot there. Uh, Mayor Daly was up there to uh, cut the ribbon and start the elephant train uh, running uh, into Cabotola uh, to, to alleviate some of the parking that we had. And uh, it, it ran on a regular basis and it was full quite often. Here's Mr. Benaeus from Benaeus's restaurant. Johnny Benaeus was very active, he and his wife, in the Begonia parades and, and in a lot of things that happened in Capitola. And he bought uh, the boy Spiro uh, from Greece uh, to, to work in his place. There's the mayor. And the elephant train is off and, and running. Young Gabe Wade from Capitola, I don't know who he is. Uh, there's a train coming up the street with a good crowd. This is on Wharf Road. Elephant trains coming up now. Had free parking. Where all the cars were parked up there at that time. People used that elephant train to get down into town, and especially in the summer months when there wasn't any parking anyplace. And that train just kept running 
uh, trip after trip after trip, back and forth, back and forth. Dave Malang, a local boy that grew up in Capitola, uh, with me, he and I started uh, school in the first grade together. <clears throat> this is a big jam session at the Seba that's going on, and somebody's shooting it. It was all curly wood in front and the flower boxes. And uh, it was quite a place. Beautiful outrigger canoes overhead and a tapa cloth on all the walls, and big turtles, uh, uh, stuffed sailfish on the walls. And this is looking up now past the patio and going up Depot Hill. And the cars were parked all along on the right. That's going up deep. Well, this is from inside of the Seva. Uh, of course, looking out, uh, we had slanting windows in there, uh, just like the Shadow Brook. We put the slanting windows in. And this is an afternoon jam session that was going on. There's a gay dude in a fancy car. That's Of course, that's China Beach in the background. This is the beautiful breakers from inside the Saba that you could see coming in. My son David and myself. Uh, now, there was a Begonia Festival in Capitola that uh, w was very popular. Uh, Peggy Slater decided to organize the Begonia Festival uh, in smaller uh, floats, and they swam for motor, for power. Now uh, there's Peggy swimming. Uh, they swam and pulled the little floats instead of a rowboat, instead of a motorboat or any other anything else. You can see the people in town watching this begonia festival. One time we even had to take it off the river when there wasn't any water and put it on the street. Came down Capitol Avenue with it. But in these days, uh, Peggy Slater had a group of young girls lifeguards and they swam. One would swim pulling it and the other one would breaststroke and kick uh, behind uh, keeping the little floats going down uh, down in, down into the Capitola Pavilion. And there's of course all of the people on the beach surrounding the little kiddie pool that was there. One time coming under the bridge they had a I think it was the Soquel Church had a steeple and they hit the bridge and the steeple tipped over and went into the water. All the flowers went askew. They had quite a few little... <laughs> the, the duck that uh, was, the, uh, was at the Shadow Brook and also at the Caribbean. We used that duck for advertising. And we used to drive up to the airport. There was an airport in Capitola Russell Rice ran the airport, he and his wife, and people, we would advertise in Fresno, it's a cool foggy day here in Capitola. Well, uh, people, would, 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 we would meet them at the airport uh, in the duck, drive across the beach into the water, turn on the propellers and bring them up to Shadowbrook. Helen Hale was one of the movie actors. Anne Blythe was another one that, that many occasions I picked up at the airport and brought her up the river in the duck to the, to the Shadowbrook. And of course, Alfred Hitchcock, uh, he eventually bought a, a home in Scotts Valley, an old ranch there, and uh, he came quite often to the Shadowbrook. Uh, he came by helicopter to his ranch, and then uh, many times though, uh, he flew into the Capitol Airport and we'd pick him up and bring him and his wife and his daughter. I think her name is Margaret, I'm not sure, but the three of them would come to Shadowbrook quite a bit. They loved Capitola. Hitchcock thought it was a great place. He called me Bard. People there in front of the boathouse, you can see how much water there is in front of it there at that time. And the little floats were small, handmade, uh, they had learned uh, in the early days they had to, to wire each of the begonias on and then I devised a way to do it with the chicken wire where you could pull the wire out and it would stretch and put the stem underneath the wire and it popped back in and, and it would stay uh, it would stay that way and 
something my brother's doing on the roof of the Sabah. Maybe he took some of these pictures from the roof, I don't know. And there's the duck going across the bridge to Capitola. Uh, another shot of one of the floats, or two or three of them. It's kind of a quaint little begonia festival. There's the begonia queen. Uh, she was a great, great queen. That's Lyle Hayford, he's, no, Huey Hayford. They have Hayford Brothers Glass in Santa Cruz. And I don't know who the Indian is. My sister in law Alice May with her little girl, Kimmy. Jun Lee, Jun Lee from Scotts Valley. Jack and Box float. That was a popular float. The lid came popped up with all the begonias on it and popped back down again. People in town viewing the begonias. This Capitol in the summertime, there's still lots of lines and lines of cars. Old 1955 cars. There goes the elephant train, see it? Running up the street again and across from uh, that, that was the old garage that was there across the street that's gone now. It's a grocery store. Uh, that was Lee Gutterman's garage. This is Capitola Avenue uh, right now where these cars are coming down. When the Sabre burned, it also burned the patio. Uh, but not completely. It, it burned it quite a bit, quite bad. It had to be completely remodeled again. During 1999, Capitola is celebrating its 50th year as an incorporated city and the 125th year since its founding in 1874. The city is also honoring the establishment of its wharf, completed more than 140 years ago. Many thanks to Brad McDonnell for sharing with the Capitola Museum this film, numerous family photographs, and many splendid stories over the years.